I have been asked by a few people to do a video of the journal that I used when I made this journal page. This is called Star Girl and there's a video of how I made this page. Um, this is just me showing it at the end so you know which one I'm talking about. A few people have asked me to make a video of the journal and how I put it together. I've also been asked to do uh, videos where I talk instead of my background music. So here goes. Hope you like it. I apologize in advance for the allergies so I sound a little nasally, but here we go. Okay, now here is where I was just talking about the cover that I was going to use, but I changed my mind, so we'll just skip. I'm going to throw in at least a page or two out of my XL Mixed Media from Canson. Just some simple mixed media paper. I just like to have a mix of paper for my journal, so that's big enough to make a few pages. So we'll get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to tear this. Let me get these out of the way. Because I like my paper torn. Okay, this is just me doing a bunch of measurements, and it was really boring and I was mumbling. So suffice it to say, just make sure that you rip your pages into whatever size will fit inside your journal cover when you're done. Okay, just line it up. Get a tear. Okay, well, I messed up the corner. Oh well, now we can fold it in half, and that's how it'll fit into the signature. So we'll have a couple of pages. No, I don't care that they're different sizes. It's kind of what I want. So don't worry too much about it. This one is going to be too long, so we're going to take off. We're actually just going to divide it really quick. I'm going to line it up and just kind of go with it. And these will be just little tiny inclusions in there. Okay, so we have these. And then I took, let me show you what I used. Okay, it's too big to bring over here, so I'm just going to show you. It looks like this, but instead of mixed media board, it's mixed media paper. It comes in a huge sheet. I bought a packet of four at my art store, but this is just Strathmore Mixed Media, and this is the paper. Okay, so I got dirty. I'm unhappy. Okay, so then I have the mixed media paper, the big sheet. I tore them in different sizes. This is going to be the biggest. This is actually going to be the size of the book once it's folded in half. So I believe this is 12 by eight and a half it is. So that's how big my pages are gonna be, my biggest pages. And then I have different sizes, just however it came about that it tore. And then, so that way they'll fold in half and fit right in there. And then I also have just this really cute piece of paper. It came with, here it's harder to see. Let's see this. There we go. Um, it came with a magazine that I purchased, um, Somerset Studio. Can't recommend it enough. It's awesome. Comes out quarterly. I absolutely love it. You get free artist papers in every magazine. And with a subscription, I got like a pack of 25. So I'm having fun with those. So this one is Neon Nonsense Artist Paper. Okay, shows who it's designed by and it's provided by Stampington. I just like it. I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to gesso over this side whenever I get to it in my book. But I'll have this really pretty background to start with. So I have that. And then I just pulled out... Oh, this is another one of the papers from Stampington and Company. I'm going to use that one. And then I pulled out some scrapbooking papers. So I'm going to tear these down to make them fit in there somehow. And um, I also pulled out a few just pages of random color cardstock to play with. See, I don't know that I'll use all of these, but I just pulled some out so I could, I just like to have a color sometimes, the white page sometimes intimidates me. So just having something in the background to start helps me. And then last, I actually have, um, 
I work in my art journal. It's a Moleskina or Moleskine or Moleskin, however you want to say it. And I pulled out some extra pages because it was kind of thick after I was working in it. So I pulled out some pages. I already have holes in them, but I'm not too worried about them. I'm going to cover those with tape um, before I sew on them, just some masking tape. So I have a few pages of that already out. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that into my journal. So I'm going to tear the sheets into whatever size I want. Um, the eight and a half by 11 is pretty much the size of my book. So once I get this little edge off, I should be able to just fold all of these in half and some of them will be the right size for my book. Some of them won't and they'll be great. I think I'm going to fold this one this way. Just so you get an idea, we'll do one really quick. I'm just swipe with the bone folder, and then you just want to fold a bunch of pages and start putting them together to make your signatures. I'll be right back after I have those done. Okay, so I have all of my papers folded, and I have them put together in individual stacks for to create the signatures. So there, those are. I changed my mind on the cover. I decided to go with the hanging file folder. It seemed like it would be fun to work on and it's already folded on the sides and I just like it so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this out because my signatures are going to be bigger than it just folded in half so I'm going to use the guidelines make it a little bigger in the back okay Okay, so this way you can see when I put the signatures in, they'll have some room in the back there. It looks like it's going to take, oh, let's see, three, these folds to fit in there so that they have a little bit of room for when they grow. You can see how they fit in there. So, we are going to utilize most of it. Okay, so, there we go. Like that. Okay, let's put it back down in the middle. And that's in the middle. There we go. So, what I'm doing here is measuring for the width of the cover and because my pages are six I'm going to measure six and a half and tear it to there. Unfortunately that is not right because I have the excess space from the spine which is going to make my pages stick out a little bit so we're going to skip ahead to where I corrected it and I cut it at seven inches instead. Okay um, six and a half too short we did it again going seven across because of the excess is taken up in the binding that way the cover actually covers the pages. Now height wise you want to do it pretty much the same height as your signatures, your tallest signature. So we're going to mark it, I'm going to do it right about wherever that happens to be. Okay so I'm just going to mark that measurement in a couple of places and then cut it to the proper height. Okay now we have the cover. All ready to go. Who do I want light blue on the outside or dark blue? I think dark blue. Okay. This direction. Now, when you get everything put together, it's going to look like that. Okay. Now we need to determine how many holes we want to punch in the back of each signature. This is my punching tool, kind of pathetic, but it'll do the job. Now if we were doing all full size sheets you could go with three holes, but because as you can see I have some signatures that have small inclusion pages which I'm going to get to right now. We're going to pull that out and take a look at it and that's going to determine that I want to use five holes. That way there will be three holes in the small pages and five in the larger ones and that is going to make sure that those small pages are definitely securely 
fastened inside of my journal and won't pull out or come loose later. The next step is to mark your spine where you will poke the holes to sew in the signatures. Now I am using the fold lines as my guide on the file folder and I am marking center and then one and a half inches out to equal five dots. After I am done doing that vertically, I turn it sideways and mark the lines horizontally so that they are all lined up on the same line and there will be four dots this way to equal the four signatures, again using the fold guidelines on the file folder to keep everything straight and lined up. Okay, so now we're all marked and take my pokey tool and make our holes. I'm not loving how sturdy this is. Not sturdy this is. So what I'm gonna do, is take some duct tape, because I do plan on painting this later, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put some duct tape. You know what, just in case I decide not to, we need to keep duct tape. Let's use some zebra stripe duct tape. Just the hair over. Now if it's too much over, you cover your holes on the other side. So I just want it to fold over a little bit. The insides. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Look at that reinforced band there where we poke our holes. Now, what you want to do is take your signatures, put your papers wherever you want them to line up, okay, and find center. So we'll just, we're going to work on the white one. Okay. So what you do is you get these lined up where you want them. Okay. I like that good enough. And then on your longest page, find center. Okay. So as soon as you find center, go ahead and give it a mark at zero, one and a half, three, so it'll match the holes in my cover. And then you just poke through at each location so that we can sew through there later. Some of these are not going to use all of the holes because I have some that are short little pages, little tiny inclusion pages. So when I do those, and that's why I did the five holes, so when I do those, this one, if I line it up in the middle, will get three holes. It just won't get the top and bottom one. So, okay, I'll be back as soon as I finish poking all my holes. Okay, so all of my holes are a little small in this one, so I'm gonna give them a quick punch and make them a little bigger so I can get the needle through. So you measure a piece roughly three times the height of your book. Okay. You can use book binding thread. You can use embroidery floss. Anything strong, anything that you like. I like twine. I just, I don't know. I like the look of it. Now I want to have, uh, I want to have it end at the top. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way down, and come back up. And that way I can have a little dangly string wherever I want them. So on this first one, I'm going to have it at the top. Now I'm working from the back of the book forward. So this is actually the last signature. Into the middle here. And you will just work your way through the signature. And back and forth. Now 
Now it's going to be a little loose at first, okay? It's okay. Tighten it all up as we go. Especially before you tie it at the end. And there we go. Okay. So now you can see that we have sections that way. So now I'm going to continue on going back through the same holes leading back to the beginning. And what you end up with is a solid line of stitches all the way down all the way down the center of the book and then all the way up the spine as well and then take the needle off and tie it now I want the dangles to come off the top on this one so I'm gonna tie the knot so that it ends at the top you can tie it anywhere you want but I'm gonna have it end at the top for this one make sure everything is whoops nice and snug I failed Okay, so there you go. We have the first signature in and ready to go. So I'm going to duplicate the process with each one and I may stagger where I'm going to end just for the dangly. So wherever you want to end, come in from there. So it's pretty simple. Okay, take the next signature and I'll get going and I'll come back to you when I'm done. Okay, I have my thread ready and I thought you might want to see how I want it to come and dangle off the back of this one. So instead of starting at the top, I'm going to start at the second hole in the second slot. Okay. Okay. So inside my signature, which is now, of course, completely out of whack. This line back up again. Because I've been messing with them too much. I'm going to come in on the second hole in the signature as well. Now, if you're like me and you get things all messed up, you might have to go page by page until you get it lined up again on the first hole or two. and pull it through the back. Okay. Now, once you get things lined up, they definitely go a little more smoothly. Okay, and now that I'm at the end, just like the last time, I'm gonna go back through the same holes coming back. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the hole where I'm ending at. Now I'm back together, but I'm going to keep sewing, okay? That way I don't miss this top hole here. Let's see if I can get through there. go. Now that I've come through the top hole, again see I can tie the knot down here. So you have just options wherever you start. I mean it didn't matter whether I started at the top or the bottom on this one because I could have still tied the knot down at the lower end. But if you wanted some danglies halfway down the book or something that gives you the idea of 
you can just start anywhere and work your way all the way to one end, back to the other, and back to wherever you need to stop at. So, there we go. Now, we have two completed signatures in the book. Okay, I will finish the other two, and then I will be back to show you the rest of it. Okay, there you have it. There is the finished journal. It is all bound up the side. You can see I left the strings hanging. I might want to dangle some beads or something off of here. I don't know yet. If or not, I can always cut them up later. So there it is, front and back cover. And then inside, in most of these pages, maybe not the very first or the very last, but most of these pages, as you open them up, are going to lay flat enough that you can paint all the way across if you want to. You can use, I'm, I plan on painting in this, not necessarily smash booking. Um, so I like that it lays open and flat so that I can paint on it. So as you can see, there's the different sizes of pages all tucked in here that I can play with. Here's the center between two signatures. But as you can see, this lays open pretty nice. I'm pleased. The center of every signature, you're going to have the thread going down it, which actually will absorb the paint just fine, and I'll paint right over it, and it won't even matter. It'll be great. So there it is. Is this a simple little art, homemade art journal using up some of my scraps or whatever papers you want? Some of these I will just so some of them I'll paint right on. Okay, so there you have it. A finished, simple, quick and easy, didn't take very long to put together art journal. Use up some of your scrap papers any papers you have laying around. Uh, make big ones, make small ones, it doesn't matter, but look at there, I have a ton of pages to paint on now. I'm ready to play. Okay, well, hope you have a great one and we'll see you soon.